Hello and welcome to DrillingContractor.org. My name is Alex Indris and I'm here at the Drilling Automation Workshop in London. Joining me is Luca Sabe from the Italian company Deep Blue. He gave us an aviation industry example of automation in complex domains. Luca, can you tell us a little bit about your presentation today? My presentation today was uh, about uh, the application of uh, methods uh, to investigate how to use automation in a, in a complex domain. My company, the Blue, particularly uh, uh, investigate the use of automation in air traffic control and aviation. And we were very proud to, to be invited at this, uh, at this uh, symposium because we would like to compare how is the situation in oil and gas and in automation. So during your presentation, you noted how automation is not simply the substitution of a human operator. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, there is this commonsensical idea that uh, you just uh, remove the human because the human is uh, inherently fallible and you replace it with an automation. Uh, this is a very simplified view of uh, how you can improve safety by way of automation. Sometimes the human are those that solve the situation, they just need to be better supported by automation. Uh, essentially, during my presentation, I was, uh, I was showing some examples of, uh, of uh, successful support given by automation. Now, first of all, automation is not all or nothing. So you can have different levels of automation. And then you can have uh, support given uh, by automation to different cognitive functions of the, of the human being. So for example, uh, uh, <coughs> information analysis, uh, it seems something trivial, but or information acquisition. Uh, I, I've been showing the example of, uh, of remote tower concept, uh, where you basically have a smaller airport that have been converted to these uh, remote tower operations. So you have uh, air traffic controllers that are checking operation in this airport from the distance. For a bigger airport, just looking at uh, a wider a wide screen with very sophisticated video cameras. And in that case, you have a very good uh, information acquisition support. While in other cases, you may have uh, information analysis support or uh, decision and action selection when uh, it, uh, the user is, offer, is offered with a set of possible decisions or in case of higher level of automation just the right decision the one that the, the automation considers the right decision but then it's still up to the human to decide whether to select it or not or in other cases you can have the automation directly executing uh, the, the operation and you may have a different grade uh, like uh, possibility to interrupt it or not but generally speaking, the, the important message, I think, of my presentation was that uh, there are many options. It's not just about substituting the human. And how does an industry or company decide what the right level of automation is for them? Yeah, of course, uh, the, you have to study the specific operational needs you are managing. You have to study uh, the context of operations. I've been explaining during my presentation about possibility to configure uh, your automation depending of, uh, on the spe specific context uh, of use. I have been uh, explaining, for example, uh, of an automation called a short-term conflict alert that helps the controller to understand, to timely predict when two aircraft are getting too close. And I have been uh, explaining that uh, in order to minimize the number of noise and alert, alert of uh, alert that are not necessary, the automation can be configured taking into account uh, uh, the kind of airspace you are flying and also the kind of uh, airports or runways uh, you, you are approaching. Yeah. And in this way you can uh, minimize the number of, uh, of noise and alerts. Generally speaking, I think an important uh, question is that uh, uh, you can have different levels of automation and you, it is important to, to select the right one. For example, uh, uh, the best level of automation is not the, always the highest one. Sometimes you may have uh, an automation which is at lower level, but at least it is used and you can take full benefit of it. While if your level of automation is too high, it may happen that uh, operators just uh, switch it off or try to bypass it in order to avoid nuisance alert or uh, inconveniences. While if you select the right level of automation, you will prevent this kind of problem. So sometimes a company might have too much automation. How would they know if they do or if they don't? 
uh, again studying uh, identifying good methods for studying uh, their own activities and, and uh, observing the way their operators are, are working trying to capture uh, correctly their operational requirement so again referring to examples uh, in aviation I was speaking about very crowded airspaces like uh, London terminal area is a good example of it sometimes uh, trying to provide too much of automation to air traffic controller in that context trying to uh, provide a continuous flow of alerts in such a context can be even dangerous because uh, uh, the, the amount of uh, noise and alert can be too high so it is better to leave it to the experience of individual controller uh, that can at the same time have some support of automation but uh, uh, remaining in control. All right, okay, well thank you so much for coming in to tell us about automation and complex systems today. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. And thank you viewers for joining us today at drillingcontractor.org.